SpaceX started the major site construction at SpaceX's launch site in Boca Chica in 2016. Seven years since then, the company invested a significant amount of money and effort to establish a state-of-the-art aerospace technology hub, which serves as the modern pinnacle for designing and rapidly iterating on their next-generation Starship Super Heavy rocket. Sadly, everything was destroyed in their latest Starship testing process. This would have set back their operations at the South Texas site considerably. The pad damage is definitely more serious than even SpaceX, or I, and you, would ever thought. Let's have a closer analysis at this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX's Starship took its maiden voyage last week, successfully lifting off its launch pad and nearly making it to stage separation. However, while Starship took to the skies on its maiden flight, the slow build of power started to devastate the launch pad, or stage zero as SpaceX refers to it. In other words, the launch site appeared as if a bomb had ripped through it. As shown in a leaked image, the area under the orbital launch mount is now a big crater. Part of the OLM structure is gone, leaving only the rebar to stand. The area around the OLM is now dirt, where concrete once stood. All that's left of the concrete lateral support beam is the rebar. Hopefully this didn't gronk the launch mount, Musk admitted recently. The OLM piping received exterior damage from the pressure waves, concrete, and heat blasts. Additionally, some of the shieldings on the stairs and other parts are no longer in place. Some of these pieces, including a door-slash-hatch pictured in the gallery below, were blown hundreds of meters into the sand dunes. This door was blown off, and if you look at the door debris now, it's bent outwards. The tank farm also received a heavy amount of damage. A concrete slab that was broken off and thrown from underneath the OLM is now laying on top of the helium tanks. Large chunks of concrete litter the ground and have created large craters. Taking a look at this, indeed it's like a piece of cheese with holes in it. Swiss. The force of impact of the debris thrown at it must have been insane. On the ground, concrete and steel were scattered everywhere. The pieces of concrete that fell off with tremendous force created deep dents. Debris hurtled all the way to the west edge of the Starbase launch complex. The powerful blast from the B-7 Raptor version 2 rocket engines seems to have completely obliterated HESCO brand barriers that are primarily used by the US military for the purpose of defense against ordnance or bombardments. The Gulf of Mexico also received some concrete. In a video posted by SpaceX, the Gulf appears to showcase many splashes as concrete gets hurled hundreds of meters out when liftoff finally occurred. The fishies definitely thought the world was ending. The video posted online by Lab Padre also documented the trail of destruction caused by the initial launch. In the video captured by one of Baldaris's cameras, Thick smoke can be seen engulfing the area around the launch site. Debris can be seen flying off in all directions, resulting in significant damage to a nearby van. Baldaris's own equipment, meanwhile, took a bashing with the deafening sound of the rocket launching audible throughout the clip. Several other pieces of camera equipment seen in the video are blown over with the footage showcasing the obvious power of the SpaceX launch. For around 90 seconds, smoke and dust filled the frame pushing everything back before finally the sky reappeared again. Ground crews will now scour the area in search of possible damage to the launch and catch tower and surrounding infrastructure, such as the nearby tank farm. Thankfully, SpaceX's Starhopper, a test vehicle used in the development of Starship, appears to have survived the launch with the retired Starhopper continuing to stand right next to the launch pad. I guess it's safe to say that Starship may have caused more damage than anyone could have expected. On Twitter, Elon mentioned that there was work being done on a water-cooled steel plate, which would be placed under the OLM, but was not able to be completed in time. If this was in place, would there have been significantly less damage? Elon seems to think so. Three months ago, we started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount. Wasn't ready in time, and we wrongly thought, based on static fire data, that Fondag would make it through one launch, Musk said. The force of the engines when they throttled up may have shattered the concrete rather than simply eroding it. 
The engines were only at half thrust for the static fire test, Musk added. SpaceX did not build the launch pad at Starbase with a flame trench or flame diverter, which are design features common to other heavy lift launch pads. Those structures are designed to direct the blast energy and hot engine exhaust away from sensitive equipment around the launch site, reducing the risk of damage. There was also no water deluge system at the launch pad for the test flight Thursday. Other launch pads, including SpaceX's Falcon 9 launch facilities in Florida and California, use water to dampen acoustic energy during liftoff. Olivier Dweck, a professor of astronautics and engineering at MIT, shared that the radius of debris and disturbance was probably bigger than anybody anticipated. The main damage to the launch pad is underneath, where the flames impinge on the ground, he said, adding that repairing the crater will take several months. It will be interesting to see how SpaceX attempts to solve this problem during future launches. They are currently building out a water deluge system, but will it be enough, or will they need to add a flame trench under the launch mount at Starbase? The resulting damage from this launch has significant implications for future operations, since this same launch pad style is currently under construction at Launch Complex 39A or LC-39A, which also hosts Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches. LC-39A cannot afford to have heavy debris thrown over a thousand feet, impacting equipment necessary for human spaceflight and Falcon Heavy launch operations. Regardless, Elon is never one to be pessimistic when it comes to Starship timelines. He even stated on Twitter that Stage Zero could be ready again in one to two months. Previously, Musk predicted Starship has a roughly 50% chance of succeeding on its debut orbital test flight and hopefully about an 80% chance of reaching orbit this year. It'll probably take us a couple more years to achieve full and rapid reusability, he added. In reality, SpaceX is building multiple Starship vehicles at the South Texas site, which the company calls Starbase, and plans to launch them in relatively quick succession over the coming months. And this year, they're targeting five boosters, eight star and eight Starships in production for 2023. Back in 2022, SpaceX finished Booster 7 and built Booster 8 and 9. Booster 8 was almost immediately relegated to the retirement yard. Booster 9, on the other hand, featured some significant design changes, completing a limited amount of proof testing and returned to the factory in early January, likely for Raptor engine installation. SpaceX began stacking B-10 in late October of 2022, and the vehicle is now fully stacked. At around the same time, SpaceX finished an immediately retired Starship S-22, finished and began testing Ship 24, finished and began testing Ship 25, and finished stacking Ship 26. Booster 9's upgrades partially insulated from the most disappointing possible scenario, retirement before flight. Booster 9's changes have already addressed those weaknesses, allowing it to continue the flight test campaign. Ship 27 and 28 are in production. Considering that it's now the end of the first quarter of 2023, SpaceX is fully capable of reaching its required target of five boosters and eight starships. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.